So welcome to Facebook Flexible GPU Expander Big Basin Workshop. Um, my name is Winnie again. Um, this is my colleague, Xiaodong. So in this workshop, we'll um, go through the Big Basin design and also um, our share. So last year, we contributed Big Basin uh, to OCP community. Um, our share um, from the last year, what are the changes and the improvements we've made, um, and also the new architecture. My coworker, uh, Xiaodong, will share the performance data um, based on some of the key services that we use in Facebook. Um, and also, hopefully, we can have time for questions. I'll start from impact. So we at Facebook are committed to the advancement of AI and machine learning. This technology has, been, uh, has made great impact in Facebook. If you open your Facebook account, you probably see um, some services like a search um, newsfeed um, on your posts and also ads. On your posts, you probably see the features like language translation, uh, face recognition. These services are all leveraging machine learning. To accelerate our progress to support um, as we train larger and deeper network, uh, neural network, we have been investing for years for machine learning hardware. Um, we're open. We do full contribution about our design to OCP. Um, in 2016, we contributed our first GPU server, Bixer, and uh, last year we contributed Big Basin. And um, just last yesterday, we um, announced that we, sub, uh, we contribute Big Basin V2 to OCP. Um, we prefer to have the disaggregated design. Um, Disag the GPU from CPU compute enables us to connect and then um, enables us to connect and leverage our existing OCP components and also integrate the new technology when necessary. We do modular design. Um, we're able to have a different configurations, as, as I just mentioned, uh, with uh, these uh, current existing OCP uh, building blocks. For serviceability, I will share more details in later slides. So this is a picture of our Big Basin system um, with its handle in the rack. Um, Big Basin is a three OU chassis design and it's open rack V2 compatible. Uh, in Big Basin, we integrate eight NVIDIA Tesla V100, we also call it Volta GPU, uh, with full NVLink mesh. Um, the, Vol uh, the Volta generation GPU is also up to 300 watt TDP, the same as the previous generation. Um, we upgraded our handle to our latest generation two socket server, Tiaga Pass. More pictures about Big Basin. Um, so inside of the Big Basin, you see the major components are the baseboard, the mid plane board, and the I.O. board. We also have the PCIe bridge car, which connects from the handle um, to, to Big Basin. Um, take note that you see uh, from the lower picture, we have um, the whole baseboard on a sliding tray, which allow you to have a quick service and swap in data center. Um, this is a example for our serviceability. We designed this system for quick repel. Um, you see, uh, when you assemble the system, everything is just drop down, slide in, and uh, some screw. You don't need the screwdriver, uh, except for the GPU and its heatsink through. Um, you can easily assemble and uh, deassemble. It's just a lot of heavy. Um, the telemetries. Telemetries in Big Basin BMC are all accessible from our handle. I'll share a little bit more how we achieve that. And um, provisioning the current Tiaga Pass server in data center is like a day-to-day -day job to our techs. Um, when it comes with a Big Basin, um, provisioning Big Basin together with its handle is not much different from provisioning existing Tiaga Pass. It's just these Tiaga Pass come with additional GPUs. Uh, I'll move to architecture. Um, so this is the um, handle, uh, handle to BMC. Uh, you see uh, we are using two sets of mini SAS HD cable to connect our handle to the Big Basin chassis. Um, 
Uh, we upgrade, as I mentioned, we upgrade the handle from our last generation Leopard to Tiaga Pass. Tiaga Pass is able to provide um, two by 16 PCIe Gen 3 from handle to big basin, uh, which doubles the PCIe bandwidth. And with Leopard, the two sets of mini SAS HD cable are cascaded, and, um, and then in Tiaga Pass is, is in parallel. Um, the mini SAS HD cables carries this below signal, the standard PCIe signal, um, the cable detection present pin, and also the USB 2.0. Um, we also have the IPMB over I2C. Um, I want to talk about, also highlight the USB 2.0 here. It's really used to um, upgrade the firmware on BMC side. We use USB to upgrade the BMC firmware, the CPRD firmware, even the GPU VBOS. Um, it's much faster and, and more efficient than the I2C or than the KCS over PCIe. So this diagram shows the major difference from our Big Basin to Big Basin V2. Um, we already covered the number one change and the number two change. Um, really, we have the uh, additional additional PCIe to go to the other side, and then it really uh, frees up one of the PCIe slot here that you can, add, you can plug other adding card device. And then the fourth change is the OCP NIC. We're able to um, upgrade the NIC from 50 gig to 100 gig, which doubles the Ethernet bandwidth here. Um, and uh, the fifth change is the PCIe flash card. Uh, we do have the flash card for this system, and before um, it was in the handle side, but it's now occupied by the second retimer card. So we moved this to um, we moved this to Big Basin V2 chassis. Um, this basically changed um, the PCI enumeration bus number. But uh, for Big Basin V2, uh, since we have a fixed configuration that we are able to um, have our BIOS to fix all these resources, these bus numbers uh, for each device, it means that whenever, um, for whatever reason, some of the device is not able to boot or, or fail to being recognized that the rest of the device PCI bus number will not change. What does it mean? It means that um, in, in these failure cases that our software tool can easily compare with the golden config file to easily figure out which, exactly which device is not there. And then they pass this information to our data center text for quick repair. It means um, from serviceability point of view, it's not limited from hardware or mechanical design. From software or firmware wise, we're also trying to improve for better serviceability. So this is a MB link. Part of the reason we designed the Big Basin is to um, utilize the MB link for these GPUs. The MB link connects this GPU uh, without, without PCIe latency. So you see, um, this NVLink have all eight GPU connected in a cubic mesh. Um, the GPU um, is able to talk to the, each other um, through these NVLinks um, to achieve much faster result uh, when we do the compute. Um, after upgrading to Big Basin V2, together with NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPU, uh, you see the NVLink um, um, upgrades. So, Volta generation GPU has two more, total six MB link, two more link than the previous Pascal generation. And uh, each MB link has eight lens. Each lens runs as 25 gigabit per second. Um, so the total bandwidth for Big Basin V2 um, with um, Volta GPU has increased about 88%. The architecture about IPMB I2C and uh, PM bus. So the IPMB interface is routed from our BMC to the PCI retimer car, and then it goes through the mini SAS HD cable to the PCI bridge car, all the way down to the mid plan board BMC. Um, the mid plan board BMC, um, in turn, has a connections to various devices of this um, big basin board. Um, the GPU, the switch, the MCU, uh, the VR controller, um, the temperature sensor, CPRD, these devices that um, 
to have the, uh, so our handle BMC is able to issue a command to Big Basin BMC to uh, request the data uh, from, from the BMC, from the BMC or uh, change the device configuration uh, from uh, our bandway. Okay, I'm gonna hand over to my colleague Xiaolong to talk about the performance. All right, thank you, Wendy. So now let's switch gear and talk about the performance of our Big Basin V2 system. And we will look at the performance in two aspects. First, we will look at the performance improvement in the hardware spec. And then we will see how the, how, how the hardware spec improvement translate into the actual application performance. And we will see two popular machine learning workload, computer vision and neural machine translation. For computer vision, we will first see the single GPU training performance. And then we will show how the uh, how it scales, how the training scales across the multiple GPU training job. And finally, we will see by enabling the new Tensor Core technology how much extra performance boost we can get out of the Volt, uh, Big Basin V2 platform. So, in Big Basin V2 platform, we upgrade the GPU from Nvidia's prior generation Pascal to the newest Volta V100 GPU. Comparing these two GPUs, Volta V100 achieves 42% improvement in, in the single position FP32 and half position FP16 compute throughput. And V100 also comes with a new Tensor Core technology, which is a specialized function unit to do the FP16 2 by 2 matrix matrix multiplication. So compared with the general purpose FP16 compute, it actually has good and bad. The good side is, although the input is FP16, it actually accumulates the value into FP32. And therefore, it can achieve a higher uh, training accuracy compared with the general purpose FP16. And the downside is it, it can only do the two by two matrix matrix multiplication and therefore has some limitations. So the theoretical peak throughput of the tensor core is 125 teraflops, which is up to 5x of the general purpose FP16. And due to its limitations, we will see in the next slide how much it will translate into the actual application performance. So Volta V100 also achieves 25% and 88% respectively for the memory bandwidth and the inter-GPU communication and VLink. And all these improvements are done within the same power end of 300 watt. So due to the added GPU performance, we have also upgraded our CPU handle to Tioga Pass. As we see in the previous section, uh, with the new CPU architecture, Skylake, we have an extra CPU performance boost. And also, Tioga Pass allows us to double the PCIe bandwidth between the CPU handle and the GPU box. In addition to this, we have also upgraded our OCP network card to 100 gig NIC so that it allows to do faster data loading and also large-scale distributed training. Besides the hardware changes, we have also upgraded our software toolchain to the newest NVIDIA CUDA 9 and CUDA 7. This work gives us faster mathematical libraries, which is Volta optimized. Now let's take a look at how the hardware and software changes reflect into the actual application performance. Computer vision is one of the most important workloads at Facebook. We use computer vision to classify the images into concrete topics so that it can not only allow people to search photos of their favorite moment, but it can also provide an immersive user experience to even the visually impaired people so that, they can, so that our photos can actually read out the um, our photos can actually read out the images for you at your fingertip. So ResNet 50 is a well-known and award-winning image classification uh, machine learning algorithm. So uh, in order to train ResNet 50 to, uh, to achieve the satisfying uh, ac image classification accuracy, uh, it needs a, 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 la a large amount of compute power to do the training. And for a single GPU training job, and if we use Pascal P100 with CUDA 8 as the baseline, by simply upgrading the GPU from Pascal to Volta V100, we achieve about 37% training throughput increase. And by keep updating the software toolchain to, from CUDA 8 to CUDA 9, 
we achieved 66% performance improvement in the training throughput compared with our baseline. And if we enable the Tensor Core technology, one Volta achieves 3x performance improvement compared with our baseline. But please note that this is not an apple to apple comparison because Tensor Core, uh, the input of Tensor Core is FP16. And therefore, potentially, we're losing training accuracies. And we will keep studying how much training accuracy we're going to lose compared with the normal FP32 compute. So ResNet tra uh, uh, training at ResNet network is actually a very time consuming process. And therefore, a single GPU is usually not good enough. And therefore, by enabling two, four, and all the eight Volta GPUs in our Big Basin V2 platform, we can achieve almost near uh, linear scaling performance improvement. And by enabling the new Tensor Core technology, we can actually uh, we can achieve an extra performance boost in the training throughput. At this point, the 8 Volta GPUs is almost equivalent to uh, 18 Pascal GPUs. And please note, this is still a working progress, and we are working with NVIDIA to figure out if we are missing any opportunities to further utilize the Tensor Core technology. Next, we will take a look at the, uh, the machine translation. Machine translation is another very important workload at Facebook. We use machine translation to translate comments and posts into different languages so that we can break the communication barrier across the people who speak different languages. On this slide, we show you an, the, an example of translating a post from Turkish to English. On the left side, we show a, a phrase-based statistical approach that we used before. Although this approach can translate Turkish to English word by word accurately, the final sentence, which reads that um, Zir, Izmir's, why you said no, we don't expect them to understand. So this is not a very good translation. Uh, actually needs a little bit uh, educated guess to figure out what's exactly Zir. And if we upgrade this algorithm from phrase-based statistical approach to the neural network approach, the final translation quality is significantly improved. Now it reads as we don't expect them to understand why Izmir said no. So this is very close to a human translation. However, this algorithm upgrade needs a lot more training power. And what we find is our Big Basin V2 platform can achieve 45% performance improvement in the training throughput. And therefore, it can satisfy the increased compute demand of the neural network approach. And this also empowers our researchers and the machine learning developers to build even larger and more complex machine learning models to keep improving our user experience. Right. Um, I think we're over time, but um, I want to thank you, um, our partner um, NVIDIA and Quanta, uh, together work with, with us to enable this um, uh, hardware and then the spec and then hardware design collateral are now in OCP. You can, you can check around. And the NVIDIA team, I think they're here. If you have any question, we can offline check with them. I'm going to switch to the next um, workshop presenter. Thank you. Th thank, thank you very much.